G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, bit of a late one, so Wednesday evening here in Australia and we can see the markets finally back over that $1.5 trillion mark. So things are looking promising. Still got to be careful, could be, a, you know, a bit of a dead cat sort of, or not a dead cat bounce. But look, it could definitely be just another run up before we see some more downside. But, you know, we don't want to focus too much on that. And look, I don't think that's what it is, but we just need to keep it in the back of our minds. But hey, look, market cap is up, you know, basically 0 0.3 uh, of a trillion dollars in just the last sort of little while. Because we got down to that 1.1, 1 1.2 trillion thereabouts. Uh, and it was quite scary. And look, up 0.8. Good thing is it's only midweek, so hopefully there can be some more upside, but you know, we'll have to wait and see. Bitcoin dominance continues to drop, so again, the altcoins are heating up at the moment, and I am super glad that I invested in the altcoins a while ago. I didn't invest at the lowest point. You know, some of them dropped another 50%, you know, from there, and I did a bit of a cleanup today of some of my uh, coins that just hadn't sort of performed that well throughout the whole sort of period. Uh, and you know, sometimes you got to cull some, and that's just the way it goes, and that's what I did today. Uh, all right, so you get ETH dominance starting to rise, and the gas price is rising because people are starting to yeah, get on things like Uniswap and you know, moving their stable coins around and getting into all the altcoins at the moment. Now, we can see that it's a bit of a mixed bag, there's some up and down sort of stuff there, but generally, again, the market is up only ever so slightly here. But really, in the last sort of week or two, again, we've gone from about 1.1 trillion to 1.5 trillion. So things are looking good at the moment. Look, let's have a look. What's done well, though? What's been the best performer in the last 24 hours in the top 100? Whew, Axie Infinity's up nice. And I mean, have a look at that. Seven days. That's unbelievable. But came from outside the top 100. So that probably sort of says a little bit right there why it's moved so hard. Harmony see, seeming to move all right. KuCoin. Nice FTX token. Terra Luna. Good. I'm glad. Uh, I'm just in the profit now. I think I bought around about this mark. Uh, and it went down uh, a fair bit before. But I still like Terra Luna. I think they're a great project. So I'll hold on to that wasn't going to sell it anyway uh decentraland stacks engine chilies like all sorts of tokens having a move but what about the losses all right there definitely has been some and what you're going to find is this is the coins that pumped yesterday so you're going to have a day where they pump and then they have a bit of a retracement and then they have a bit of a pump later and then a bit of a retracement so that's what's happening but look in the last seven days they are all up and up you know quite substantially generally so looking not too bad and again the losses are hardly anything plenty of double digit gains there only really two double digit losses and then just single digit losses but again you just jump to the right hand side i don't think anyone's complaining if they've lost six percent when they're up 56 percent over the last seven days now could this retrace some more absolutely but it could also pump really hard tomorrow we'll have to wait and see and again, synthetic uh, network token, one of my favorite DeFi plays. All right, let's have a look. We'll just refresh that. 1.525 trillion. Yep, still sort of hanging in there. All right, let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. And now all the things that were holding yesterday are still holding. So again, we still have this bullish divergence here on the RSI. So we're still going up. And this is also still going up. The MACD, it's starting to get quite close now. So again, that could indicate that we have a little bit of a pullback. Or it could indicate that we have a really big pullback. But on the actual chart itself, again, we are really just traveling sideways. But... The volatility is extremely low at the moment. And again, as I said yesterday, it was really chop soaring over, all over the place. Now it's just getting really tight, really tight, really tight. And you know, you could probably draw a little bit of a wedge sort of thing there. So what we're waiting to see is which way do we break out. We could just continue to go sideways. That's completely possible. So just keep kind of edging along here. Or we could have a real violent move to the downside or upside. Because that's generally what happens when this travels sideways for a while. The first move that comes, 
the first big one, not just a little candle, but the first big move that comes, whether it's to the upside or the downside, is usually pretty large when the volatility gets really, really low. And look, even the volume's low at the moment, so we'll have to keep an eye out on that. Now look, uh, not a whole lot of stories out there, but really, all these stories pretty much focus on regulation. So Crypto Derivatives Exchange Bybit is to introduce stringent KYC policies. So they already had a little bit of KYC, but they can all see the writing on the wall. Crypto, Bitcoin, Ethereum, you name it, we'll just call it crypto, it's not gonna be the wild, wild west anymore. If you don't have KYC in place, the long arm of the law and regulators and that will come after you and they will shut you down. They already have been doing that. So, hence why even Bybit about to go full KYC. Now again, this kind of regulation is not that bad. You know, some people will say, yes it is. For me, again, I don't really care. I'm fine with KYC and I'm fine with, you know, the government uh, knowing how I'm spending my money and where I'm spending my money, sort of, as long as they just don't jump in and tell me, again, if it's outright illegal, different story, I completely agree. They have every right to come and butt their nose in. But outside of that, you know, as long as no one ever suddenly comes and stops you from doing what you want, and they say, oh, look, morally we think that's wrong, but it's not illegal, that is when I think, you know, we need to be worried. But, you know, some regulation to protect the average user, you know, so again, KYC and then, you know, knowing where money's going and how it's being spent, I don't have any problems with that whatsoever. All right, so Allied, this one, not regulation, this is actually quite bullish. So Allied Payment Network embeds Bitcoin service and they say they will hold BTC in their corporate treasury. So it's just another big business that's basically getting into Bitcoin and they're going to hold Bitcoin in their corporate treasury. This Again, it's that kind of trickle, trickle, you know, we had a bit of a blow off top there and then we've come back down and settled and now things are just starting to simmer again and most likely gonna get ready to, you know, lead to the upside, in my personal opinion, not financial advice. But another big payment network, they're putting Bitcoin in there so people are gonna be able to buy, trade, sell Bitcoin and all the rest of it. And they're also going to hold BTC themselves in their own corporate treasury. So pretty bullish if you ask me. Now more regulation. So amid the growing regulatory hurdles, Binance has strengthened its, compli its compliance team by hiring a new director, Jonathan Farnell. So he comes from the crypto-friendly trading platform, eToro, where he occupied the same position and was also a board member of uh, and head of compliance. So Binance, again, they're having all sorts of issues at the moment and having to withdraw out of certain areas and stop certain services. I wouldn't worry too much. It is going to be a bit of a hassle for Binance for a little while. They're going to have, you know, some regulatory issues, but I have no doubt they're simply going to get on top of this stuff and get fully compliant and regulated. You know, CZ's not going to let Binance simply disappear now, even though he's a billionaire. He could if he wanted to, but he's not simply going to let this uh, exchange and platform simply die off because now regulation has come. He just now knows that the, you know, kind of wild, wild west days of crypto, and that's the best way we can call it, they really are coming to an end. Uh, you know, this kind of, you know, regulation, KYC and that, uh, and, you know, AML, all the rest of it, uh, is sort of here to stay. And you're either going to get on board or they are going to come after you and shut you down. And, you know, they may not be able to shut your thing down on the internet, but they will shut off all the avenues, you know, to your sort of sites and that, and basically then just, you know, suffocate them from the outside in, uh, is what I see sort of happening anyway. And again, I don't see Binance letting that happen. I think they'll get it fixed. So more regulation here. We can see FinCEN appoints its first chief advisor for crypto. So even they're getting specialist roles now for people in crypto. The writing is on the wall that regulation is coming and it's coming you know, I wouldn't say fast, but it's definitely not coming slow, but it's not coming hard and fast. Like, you know, the regulation is not gonna come in and stifle this. They just can't afford to. This, they, everyone now can see it from a mile away, other than people who wanna stick their heads in the sand and pretend like this is not happening. Crypto is here to stay. It absolutely is the future and it absolutely is going to be adopted. 100% I have no doubt about that whatsoever. And again, that's not financial advice. That's just my personal opinion. 
But I can't see any way, shape or form where crypto is not adopted. And particularly now that, you know, China have really pushed them out, uh, you know, of China, all the Bitcoin mining and all that kind of stuff. America needs to find a way to stay on top. And I think they're going to jump on the crypto train. In, in all fairness, I think that's what they're going to do. And they are already, you know, the most ready for crypto, as we saw from that survey the other day. So what does that tell you? That tells you that, you know, that it's set up for it to happen. There's just all this kind of hoo-ha and trying to slow it down and make sure they've got everything ready before it happens. And, you know, I really hope Australia is kind of taking notice and they're going to get on board and be one of the leaders as well. Because, you know, while Australia is a leader in some areas, we definitely fall behind in a lot of places. And I think, you know, we could really change our financial sort of uh, space if Australia were to get on the front foot. And I hope they are planning something like that. So, you know, ScoMo, if you're out there and you're listening, mate, this stuff, it literally is going to happen. And we need to be on the front foot to be one of the leaders in that space. All right, Alpha Finance Lab. So it rallies 50% as project fundamentals improve. This is a coin that I picked up uh, in the dip. And again, I didn't buy it at the exact bottom, but I bought it for about, I don't know, a third of the price of its old all-time high. Does that guarantee that it's going to get back there? No, absolutely not. It doesn't. But if it does, then I've basically, you know, sort of, you know, nearly tripled my money, let alone what might happen if it goes to its new all-time high. And, you know, I've already started staking half of it as well. So half of it I'm leaving there to sort of see what happens and the other half I've got staking. And if the price just continues to go down and never kind of really gets back to its old all-time highs, then I'll just stake it and let it go. I didn't bet my life savings off it, but I do like Alpha Labs. So we go down here. They've also had a 100% rally, 110% rally in the price of Alpha Finance over the last four days. Now, what's been the catalyst to that? So Alpha uh, Homora version 2 uh, has been launched. Now, it also says here, Alpha Homora V2, which brought a new level of interoperability to the project by allowing users to conduct leverage yield farming on Curve, Balancer, SushiSwap, and Uniswap. So again, this is a project that I'd heard about for a while and I felt like I'd missed it. And, you know, luckily I had taken some profits and then we had this really big retracement and I got in. And again, as I say, you know, a number of times on my video, you don't have to pick the exact tops and the exact bottoms. No one does. And that's the truth. Remember what, uh, I can't remember his exact name, but he's one of the old Rothschilds. He said he never picked the top or the bottom and he didn't have to. He made all his money in between. And that's exactly, I'm following that mantra to a T. I don't care if I don't buy things at the exact bottom. If I do get lucky, then I'm, you know, I'm grateful for it. And I don't care if I don't sell at the exact top. I sold Bitcoin at 47,000. And I thought, oh God, I was kicking myself when I saw it going up to 60 something thousand. And I was like, I guess I sold too soon. Still sold at a profit. So I made money. And then what happened to Bitcoin? It went down and I bought some at 39,000. I bought some at 34,000 and I bought some at 31, sort of 32,000. So in the end, it did pay off. And all I think about is what that Rothschild said. Yeah, don't worry about picking the exact top. Don't worry about picking the exact bottom. I'm going to make plenty of money simply in the middle there. Now, can I keep doing that? Only time will tell. All right, last but not least, so a survey was done here, and this was done over in Europe. So it finds 40% of institutional crypto investors intend to buy a lot more. 40% say they're going to buy a lot more, but it gets even more interesting. So a new surge survey suggests that hedge fund executives, wealth managers, and institutional investors already holding crypto assets in t intend to increase their holdings. Now it says here, the crypto survey, sorry, the survey conducted by London-based crypto fund uh, Nickel Digital Asset Management revealed that 82% of the 100 investors and wealth managers polled expected to increase their exposure to digital assets between now and 2023. That's basically all of them. You know, we're talking 18% weren't going to put any more money into crypto. The rest of them were. What does that tell you? Again, this space is growing. Yes, we've had a correction. It's been a healthy correction. It's got rid of all the, you know, all the speculators. Because speculators, that's, you know, 
if you're an investor, you love speculators because they come and push the price up, you know, to where it's overvalued. And then hopefully you've sold and taken some profits. Eventually they get shaken out because they can't handle the downside. And hopefully you're able to buy back into the good projects at a cheaper price. And that is how you really build a massive portfolio. And remembering what that Rothschild said, doesn't matter if you sell the top, sorry, it doesn't matter if you don't sell the top and it doesn't matter if you don't buy the bottom. You're gonna make plenty of money in between. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train at the moment and I'll see you next time.